Well, <laughs> guys, welcome to another live stream by yours truly, K6UDA, but this is a very special live stream today. Today is the big YouTubers ham fest, as you could probably tell by my, uh, my cool new background for the YouTubers ham fest and all this very cool stuff. Very, very nice. Um, so cool to see you guys. 133 guys on the stream at this exact second, I think. Uh, and the number is growing as we speak. Uh, coming in here, I have a lot of very, very cool stuff today. Um, we're going to have uh, Jim from Quirky QRP on the show very, very soon. Very, very soon. As a matter of fact, he is here. He is waiting. Um, we're going to have uh, a tour of, of the MFJ facility. I, I was blown away how big this place really is. And I have a special, um, a special set of guests, uh, WTWW shortwave radio station. Like what? It's like a hundred thousand Watts of power in a transmitter. Anyway, guys, um, let's go to camera number two here and I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring James in. Uh, James, how you doing? Hey, Bob, I'm doing good. How are you? Very good. Uh, just want to make sure that everybody can, uh, can hear us. Thumbs up. If you can, uh, if you can hear both James and I. I can hear you, but I'm looking at your desk screen right now. I'm not oh, seeing you're still, you. Okay. Well, I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able it. to do anything about that. That's our, that's our Skype connection. Hey, so, that's a cool revolt up there. Yeah. Uh, guys, this is the, uh, the new Vaquero because I am an old, uh, wheel gun guy. This is a single action Colt army. Well, kind of, uh, 45 long Colt, but I love this thing. This is, uh, what I consider actually, I'll move it down here. This, this one here is my, uh, I call it my barbecue gun. And, uh, <laughs> let's see, we've got, uh, we've got finger Morse over here. We have the slink tenna, which you'll maybe want to talk about. I have my Idaho, uh, name badge right Don't in there some. already. And let's go back. Whoop. Hang on here. What did I just do? I just went to the wrong screen and went back over to here. So now <laughs> there we go. There we go. My friend. Very, very cool. Um, Jim, it is, uh, it is all you, uh, my friends, this is Jim, uh, Jim Hannibal from quirky QRP and, uh, go ahead, take it away, my friend. Yeah. So first I just wanted to say that last video you did of the, uh, ICOM 705, that was pretty cool. I didn't realize how wide of a frequency range that thing covered. So that was pretty impressive. That was a good video. You guys have been doing a great job today with all these streams. I don't know how you bring it all together. Um, I'm impressed. Great job. It's been amazing. I, so, I am actually, I am pretty impressed too. I, the handoffs this morning, uh, for the other YouTubers that are, are in the stream right now. <laughs> Holy crap, guys, you guys knocked it out of the ballpark this morning. Unbelievable. I have huge shoes to fill. But anyway, we're not here to talk about me. Oh yeah, you know what? <laughs> couple of new uh couple of new badges or um uh patches from some some more law enforcement friends that I introduced uh last week. But uh the wall of ham radio law enforcement guys. Jim, all the way back to you now and uh go ahead and take it away. Yeah, so 
my little product, which is it's very simple. It's actually it's hard for you to show off because it's so small. I'm glad you have that uh, that down angle on that camera there. It's called Finger Morse. It's a very simple straight key, and the basic idea is to allow hams to operate Morse code while pedestrian portable, while walking around. Um, you know, people do that all the time with their HTs on voice, and I always thought, you know, if I can do that in my with my backpack and have a hand mic coming over out of my backpack, why can't why can't people do that with CW? So that's where this came from. This idea came from. I I suck at more. I suck at code. I just suck. I, yeah. What can I say? But it works. That's the beautiful thing. This is a straight key, and it just you plug it in, and it just works. I love that. Yeah, so it's nice because um, I've been able to source the parts in bulk, so it allows me to sell it uh, at a at really low price, um, so much so that it's actually cheaper to buy it than it is to build yourself. Um, although I don't discourage people from building it themselves. I mean, you can take all kinds of buttons and, and, and make yourself a cool little um, tiny Morse code key. Uh, and I just uh, had this idea of watching some soda videos and I kept seeing guys, you know, they have these sometimes long hikes up to a peak. And they have all that time on their hands hiking up. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if those guys could have some fun on the air while they're hiking? You know, most of these guys are using really small QRP rigs in the first place. Uh, typically, you set up on a single frequency. So with with uh, your, your QRP rig in a backpack and a little whip antenna sticking out like the... Uh, the MF, MFJ makes a really nice one. I know you're doing an MFJ video coming up here in a little bit. Uh, the MFJ 1820T is the 20 meter band version, and it's a short telescopic whip, and they're great to stick on the end of of a uh, like a KX2 or an X5105, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I've even got here. Hey Jim, I, uh, I gotta take yeah. a, I gotta take a couple of seconds here and acknowledge no a couple of uh, a couple of um super chats oh great cool yeah so uh john Pruce super chat for the swear barrel i guess it's it's turned from a jar to a barrel and uh let's see ham radio 2.0 uh oh my god can i do it again nope i have to i have to try it again here there it goes. There it goes. Thank you from Ham Radio 2.0. I think there was another couple of them in there. Um, I have to get rid of that. I have to come over here. And from Oops Swear Jar it is S <laughs> at code. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh my lord. And uh and finally, I think uh let me get out of that one and pull that one up. Uh bigger swear jar. Wow. 7.62 swear jars. <laughs> Thank wow. you guys. Oh my god, hang on, hang on, hang on. We got one more. We got another one here. I guys, thank you so much. This is just awesome. Awesome. Very, very cool. Um, okay. Uh, ooh, hang on here. That was supposed to be you. There you are. Okay. Back to you. All right. So, you know, and in many cases, after a soda activation, you typically have a lot of battery life left because in, in, in many cases, you don't get that much time at the peak, right? You, you spend a lot of some of these more difficult peaks. You spend a lot of time hiking up and a lot of time hiking back. And so it'd be nice. I think it'd be fun for guys to be able to use up, use the leftover battery power they got left after the activation and keep their rig rolling, stay on the air, make some more fun QSOs on the hike down. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's uh dude. It, it's such a neat idea. And I love seeing stuff from, uh, you know, from small creators. Uh, and, and that's exactly what you are. I mean, 
this is it's simple in its design. I mean, super, super simple. Um, one thing that that I did discover uh, this morning is when I was playing with this on the uh, on the KX3 is right now it's not putting anything out. Where if I use the key here, it's not decoding. And I and I've got that key set up wrong for me. So I, I screwed it up, so I can't do it right at all. <laughs> I wonder it's if, not if decoding, the but we kind of figured because uh, this has like a four-pin connector in it that goes inside. I think that might be that four-pin connector is what links up to the uh, to the decoder. So that might be might something that uh, well, maybe maybe Elecraft can uh can make a workaround for that in software because that's one thing they are really good about putting stuff out um so anyway back to uh, back to your picture yeah so um i've been just playing around with this thing and uh one of the i've been trying it on everything from the kx2 which is a little spendy to uh rigs as simple as an altoids uh qrp transceiver and it works on that too. It's just a simple straight key. Keep it simple. Oh yeah. I also have, I wanted to show you, I got my backpack rigged up here just to show you how this would typically go. And the basic idea is you throw your rig in and have a telescopic antenna coming out. And then you just have your earphones coming out also. And then I've actually got the finger morse attached to a carabiner and then to my backpack strap. So you're not stuck with it on your finger. You can come up with other creative ways to mount it and keep it out of the way. Keep your hands totally free and just reach up and key up from your shoulder strap. So that's another option. That is awesome. That is that is just so cool. Um, and obviously you've used this in the field. You know, yeah, I I've haven't I haven't been out in the field train. Hang on. <laughs> we have to go back <laughs> to the train video out here because it's going to just totally screw up my stream. Of course. Why not? <laughs> screw it. <laughs> it doesn't sound too bad for me. I barely hear it. Oh, my God. Hey, guys, I just want to say 372 people on the stream right now and uh, 107 thumbs up four thumbs down oh my lord come on guys oh. um let's make it 369 uh 369 thumbs up smash that thumbs up button right now we'll come back over to uh james here see how i give you those uh i give you the uh audio cues that you're back up <laughs> okay, okay we got so just two minutes and then we've got to get, uh, I've got to get over to uh, MFJ. So uh, okay. real quick. It's fine. Uh, and a couple bucks shipping. And you can find it by just going to Etsy and typing in uh, Finger Morse. Or you can go to my Etsy page, which is Quirky QRP Ham Radios. And, and it's there. I've got a lot of them to ship out. And also, I'm still making, I'm still making this link tenant. You've got one there. Still making these guys, having a lot of fun with them. A slinky, Eighty through six a meters. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not using their after that. That's a little bit of copyright problems there. <laughs> <laughs> not using their jingle. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on, Bob. It's been great, and I appreciate you having me here and and everything you guys have been doing, making this thing come together. All these all these uh, YouTubers, and I hope you guys do this again next year. Yeah, Jim, thank you so much, man. That is just freaking awesome. And my uh, my damn uh, <laughs> my damn switchers aren't aren't switching again. What else is new? Something always has to go wrong on here. Technology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jim, thank you. Um, very, very good. Gotta go. Seventy three. Seventy three. And uh, coming up here right now, 
We have uh, this is Jared Marsh. Jared, let me uh, let me make a uh, try to get my split screen back. And yeah, of course that doesn't want to work. Let me. Uh, I've got to. Give me a second. Just give me one second there. Nope. You go away. You come in. Okay, well, I guess that'll work. Um, I'm big. You're little. Everything. You're, are you in there, Jim? Or Jared? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. I'm going to go ahead and give it all to you right now. Guys, this is Jared Marsh from MFJ. He is one of the engineers. Jared, before you, um, before you uh, take it away here, I need to, uh, need to do one of these here from the Ham Radio dude. Good work to everyone involved today. Ham Radio community is grateful. Hey, thank you guys. We are grateful for every single one of you that is on this stream. Um, and let me go back to this one here. And Jared... Uh, go ahead and take it away. Give us your call sign. Tell us anything you want. The floor is yours. All right, Bob. Um, so as Bob said, the name is Jared. The call sign is Alpha Echo 5 Lima Golf. And as he said, this is this call is being recorded from the MFJ main building in Starkville, Mississippi. Have about a half dozen things that I plan to show you all today. <clears throat> Let's start with the small stuff that's easy. So this, if you can see it, is the MFJ 2925. We're calling it a high and low impedance variable RF transformer. So what it does is it is, it's literally just an auto transformer in a tiny box. You can use it to provide a better SWR ratio for your transmitter. It's not really a tuner in the traditional sense of a tuner. The, um, the transformation ratios are fixed, so they'll be, it may not pull your antenna down to one to one, but what it's designed to do is to pull that SWR down to the point where, say, a three to one auto tuner inside of something like an IC7300 will be able to then go ahead and finish matching your antenna appropriately. The nice thing about this, as you can see from the image, is it fits in my hand. It's in a little, I'd say two and a half by three and a half inch box and can be put in a backpack or any other small carry container. Uh, continuing these small items, this one, which doesn't really doesn't quite have a model number yet for the catalog, but this is a 150 watt antenna tuner in the same form factor as that auto transformer, and I have actually tested this here in the lab and put power across it, and it was quite capable of matching pretty much anything I threw at it. Um, I'm actually kind of excited about this one because, again, it's very small, fairly lightweight. You can throw it in a backpack or any other box and uh, be good to go operating 100 watts wherever it is you want to end up. Uh, end up. So <clears throat> let me stand up and turn this around for you. What we have over here. Bob, can you see the uh, table there? I can. All right, so this is a remote antenna switch for position. We're calling it the MFJ4713, <clears throat> and it is rated, well, let me put it this way. I tested it with the biggest amp we had at Ameritron, and it worked. No problems loading at all no problems overheating or anything like that so we're probably going to end up rating this thing at legal limit but it's for position everything is controlled 
across a single piece of coax. This carries both your RF and your DC and AC control voltages. And I say AC because this thing uses a 12 volt AC power supply, not your standard 12 volt DC power supply. But this is the control unit. Again, very small form factor designed to be attached to the edge of a bench so that it's nice and out of the way. One knob controls on, off, and selects all your antenna positions. This unit here is the outdoor remote unit. It's just designed to clamp to the pole or whatever you have outside holding up your antennas. And you have your four antenna ports as well. Um, <clears throat> Moving over here, this is an evolution on our 936B loop tuner. The big difference, uh, as fans of that unit will notice, is that we've now added the capability to run a piece of coax as your loop instead of the traditional wire loop. The wire loop hookups are still available. They're still on the backside, so... For the wire loop enthusiast, we've still got you covered. But if you just have a piece of coax to use as your radiating element, you just plug it into the side with the SO239 connectors and you're good to go. We're also updating the 933s and the 935s similarly. So these units, I'd have to check, but I believe they are going into production very soon. Let's see, what else do we have today? This is a QRP tuner that contains a watt meter and an internal dummy load. Can you again tilt the camera down a little bit more? Sorry. How's that? That's much better. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> this is a QRP tuner, watt meter, and dummy load. So this is rated for 20 watts. I have tested it at 20 watts, and it was able to uh, match the G5RV that I was using it with. Uh, no, no, no noticeable signal distortion or significant losses going through the device, but this not only, <clears throat> excuse me, not only does it, does it have the watt meter, but it has the uh, T-Network antenna tuner in it. And it fits, as you can tell, in a very small box that can be placed inside your uh, backpack and carried up that mountain or into that park or whatever you want to do with it. Very, very right. cool. How we doing, Bob? We are doing good. Uh, you still have, you still got all the time um, in the world right now. All right. Well, wow. we've got the big box. So a lot of people will be familiar with the uh, MFJ box fan loops, the 2x2 two two squares. Well, this is the larger 3x3 three three version of it. Um, we've got to doing some math and determine that if we increase the dimension, the um, circumference to 12 feet and chose our capacitors very carefully, we could get one of these units that was functional down at 40 meters. And it turns out it worked. So we have two of these. We're calling them the 1783 and the 1784. One of them will be rated for 10 through 30 meters. The other will be rated for 15 through 40 meters. And both units are going to be rated for at least 100 watts of output power. And these are interesting. Let me go around the side here. It's only four inches thick. So while it's got a fairly large front face, you turn it on the side and it will slip underneath just about anything in the back of your vehicle. That's another unit that we are ready to put into production fairly soon. All right, last but not least on the products, we have this antenna. This one has been built by one of our other engineers and it, while it may look like a screwdriver, it is not in the sense that you're thinking about it. <clears throat> what we've done is design a patented uh, remote control coil with no moving parts that all fits inside this black tube here. 
And so you attach, this is a 17 foot whip, collapsed obviously to fit in the room, but you attach a 17 foot whip, you can either put it on a base like this, or as it was originally intended, mount it to a vehicle. And then you have a little control box with a knob. Can you see the box, Bob? Uh, yeah, can you tilt down a little bit more? Right there. How's that? Beautiful. All right. Um, you turn the knob here. I don't know if you can hear the relays clicking, but you can probably see the green light blinking. Um, it scrolls through the various um, inductance settings. And, of course, it comes with programmable memory channels. So once you find where your favorite frequency settings are, you just have to push the buttons and you go right back to it. And this runs on just 12 volt DC, can be powered by a car electrical system. Um, it only pulls about half an amp at the most. So just about any cheap AC to DC power supply will, um, will run this thing. Holy crap, I want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they are uh, they're getting surprisingly uh, popular here. Now, you said that uh, that the guy who's developing that one is uh, is actually got that mounted on his uh, on his car. He does. Uh, that one right there, I believe, is slated to be mounted on my truck at some point in the near future. As soon as we. Uh, as soon as we get 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 around to taking care of it, but he is currently operating with it on his vehicle, and he has about a forty five minute drive in and out of work every day. So it's been put to um, it's been tested in all of the wonderful summer and spring weather we have here in northeastern Mississippi at seventy miles an hour, or however fast he drives on the highway. That is awesome. So, uh, that is so cool. So I I assume it's weatherproof, uh, pretty well sealed. Is there any heat buildup issues or anything else going on? I haven't heard of any heat buildup issues in it. Uh, the one on his car is weather sealed. This one we've still we've been testing it inside the building, so it's not sealed yet. But yes, the production ones will be weather sealed. Very very cool, and that's like instant tuning. Kind of like an auto tuner. Not you, you. It's you're not waiting for you're not waiting for taps to run up coils, motorized or anything. It's you're you're like boom. I want to operate 40 meters. You just click it into the 40 meter position and that's it, huh? Exactly. Um, like I said, there's no moving parts inside, unless you count the relays. Wow, that is just. I, I am. <laughs> I am absolutely amazed. That is so cool. Um, okay, and now on the uh, the big loop uh, question uh, on the big loop from me. Does that thing okay. weigh fifty pounds? It does not. Um, I, mean, I would looks, say for, it looks huge. Well, it's three by three feet, so it's a fairly good size. But um, let me turn you around again. You'll notice on the side of it, right underneath where I've taped up what I'm, where we're going to put the silk screening, you can see there's just a single carry handle. This thing weighs, I don't know, I'd say within no more than 10 pounds at the most. I haven't actually put it on a scale, but it's not heavy at all. I pick it up and carry it around the building all the time. That is so cool. That is just, guys, this stuff, if, if any of you guys, you know, have been down on MFJ, you know, I, I've, everybody's heard all the, all the funny little jokes and everything, but seriously, uh, these guys are developing this stuff and building this stuff here in the USA. It's not coming over from, uh, it, it, it's not they're not just ordering everything from China. They're developing it here. They're building it here. You guys wait till you see, um, see the, the tour of the factory. The place is immense. 
Um, so I don't know what else. Uh, what else do you want to do here? Um, we got uh, we got about ten minutes left in our, okay. in our portion of the stream. What else do you have for us? Well, um, surprise guest, oh, Mr. Jew decided Mr. to join Jew. us today. Hello, everyone. Let me uh, unplug my headset so he can hear us. Hear us? Yes. Hey, Bob. This is Martin. How are you today? I am great, sir. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. It's hot outside. Yeah, uh, my video seems to have frozen up here. Um... You might have to move. Really? You might have to move yeah, a little bit. I'm going to set the tablet down so we can. Let's turn it this way. Okay. Yeah, your video is. Uh, your video is frozen up. So I'll give you. I'll give you guys a, a couple of seconds there. And. Um, right, I don't know if you uh, if you guys need to uh, uh, hang up and call back. You can do that. Whatever. Okay, now the picture just went away, and uh, it's back to my my Skype screen. So I'm gonna just kind of hang on for a quick second. I will let you guys. Ah, you're back. You're back. We are. There back. you are. There you go, Mr. Jew. The floor is yours. <laughs> oh, I, I just dropped in to uh, say hello to everyone. Uh, I know Jarrett has been showing you uh, the new products. Uh, he's been a busy guy. Yes, um, he has. <clears throat> hope everybody out there is doing well. Yeah, it, this has been uh, this has been an incredible day, and I want to thank you for being part of uh, of the first ever YouTubers Ham Fest. Well, this is a great thing that you put on for all of us hams and not just our country but the entire world Bob. appreciate that well thank you thank you sir it's uh, it, it's been a a collaborative effort and there has been a lot of behind the scenes work uh to get this to uh to work today so uh, yeah. Mr. Jew, thank you so much. This man, what a treat to have you on the show. <laughs> you, well, uh, you always uh, want to be the guy uh, in the background, and I like having you up front. Well, you know, I've been outside playing with a uh, new antenna that we're uh, designing and trying to get out. So I'm all sweaty and hot. Well, you look fine. You look just fine. Mr. Jew, can I ask you, how many people do you employ there at the factory? Uh, we have around 130 or so. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah. And I know I have some, uh, I've got some video to play. Um, let me see if I could get this video to work. And if I can, um, I will... I will have you narrate us through it, okay? Okay. Uh, give uh, me, I, hope. I, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Do you have something? Do you have YouTube running somewhere? We do on this tablet. Okay, oh, YouTube? so. On YouTube. Just, I can you, up. Well, I, I don't want you to break your connection there because I'd love to have you narrate. Um, I'll, uh, I'll play the... Uh, I'll just play the video here. And so Bob, here we are on the inside. Ben's actually taking the the tuner part of the uh, antenna. Oh, so hang on here. here. I, I screwed up. So mm. Bob, here we are on the inside. Ben's actually taking the the tuner part of the uh, antenna out so we can see it in detail so you can see what's going on this is a patented design and i've got to get that patent number ben for i've got it on my desk actually i can give that to bob so he can mention that yeah so that's uh, got a lot going on inside that pvc container yes we're what we're doing is we're switching each of these coils 
I went to uh, larger open air coils to keep the efficiency as high as possible at mm -hmm. the low, low frequency end and uh, went to toroids for better shielding and isolation at the upper frequencies. And are those little relays on there that that's yes. how it's communicating yes, with those the are, controller? Those are little, re little relays. Okay, there, there's the patent number right there. Okay, this is the, folks, this is the MFJ1669, the inside guts. It goes inside of that PVC container. This is another model that's got, you said that one was This external. one will do up, do down to 60 meters. 60 meters, okay. And the other one is 40 meters here. Correct. Okay. So basically the same design, just a little more height on that one? Yes, one, one extra coil. And that's it. So I think uh, this is gonna be a very, very interesting product for the mobile field. And uh, of course, not a whole lot of people driving around uh, here <laughs> during this thing, but uh, we will get back on the road and we will get back to normalcy soon, I hope. And uh, this is gonna be a product that you guys can check out ASAP. Have a good one, 73's Bob, thank you. Okay, and let me see if I can bring you back, bring you back in. That wasn't the video that I wanted. We've got four minutes left. Uh, let me try to get the last video, and that is the uh, Jared. That's the tour that you uh, you gave me. So let me let me see if I can get that one. Um, let me choose the right file. MFJ walkthrough. Okay. So anyway, right, I can't see here, so. So I assume we're just walking into the uh, into the back room now. Right. Well, I came in through the front door, so that's the street side entrance. Okay. And you would have seen a little glass window to the right. That is the uh, where the reception staff sits. Um, I panned right and left to show you the offices, and we just keep walking. The building's basically aligned along that big central hallway, and we just keep walking all the way to the back until we get to the production area. And uh, you'll see some of our production staff back there. They were just clocking out when I made the recording. Um, each of those lines, as I start to walk down through the uh, factory area, each of those lines of benches is responsible for making different products. So some, some lines will be making high power tubers, some will be making antenna analyzers, and things like that. And eventually we get all the way to the back me? where we see the large surface mount machine, which is how we populate a lot of our more, most of our more compact boards. Um, I can't tell where in the video it is right now. And we can't see the video, Bob. Okay, yeah. Well, let me. You're. We're looking at a lot of benches. Uh, you're walking by a whole series of workbenches right now. Just ignore me. Okay, so those are the production I'll lines tell you I was second. describing. Let me finish. And each one of those lines, like I said, makes different types of products, from antennas to the analyzers to the uh, high power tuners, all that stuff gets made right back in there by those people. Okay. Bob, that's, <clears throat> Bob, that's the uh, MFJ side of it. There's okay. also a building for Ameritron mm -hmm. and a building for High Gain and Cushcraft and also another building that has all the computer controlled punch presses for making the cabinets. Wow unbelievable thank you so much for that tour that is awesome um let's see my my next guest is texting me <laughs> of course this is what happens on live tv and and mm -hmm. i noticed that you guys are looking at my desk on skype you're not even looking at me i apologize i was trying to I fix it airing the stuff on it and i can't even uh, yeah that was from my last guest um quirky qrp and i can't even get that stuff i can't even change my picture here or uh my camera on the skype side 
but it is. Uh, anyway, sir, I'm going to, I've got to, uh, I got to push off to the next guest. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. For doing this. Well, thank you, Bob, for including us. Okay, seven three, sir. I will. Um, I will definitely try to break this apart, and then you can use that on your, uh, um, on your side of the uh, okay. of the video. Thank you, and I've got to take this. I got to take this next call here. Uh, seven three. Okay. Okay, uh, we have our next guest coming in here, and I'm, uh, Holly, can you hear me? Can you uh, hear yes, me now? we can hear you fine. Okay, let me run over to this side here. Sorry about the video, that, or the, the picture you're seeing of me. Um, I, for some reason, I can't, there it is, now I could change it. Now you're looking at me. There you are. Okay. Now, um, let me let me turn to camera one here for just a second. And guys, uh, number one, MFJ, thank you, Mr. Jew, thank you, Jared, thank you so much. Um, I am really really excited about seeing those new products coming out. Um, next up, we have. Uh, let's see. This is this is WTWW shortwave radio station. Um, this is Holly. Holly Randall. Is it Holly Randall? Yeah, good enough. <laughs> okay. Um, Holly and her son on here. Um, very cool. Very nice to uh, to talk to you guys. You guys run uh, a fairly large transmitter, I understand, don't you? Uh, yes, we do. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> go ahead and um, go yeah. ahead and tell us about it. Well, um, we run WTWW. It's our family. Uh, David, Matt, who we were trying to get on, but you know, we didn't <laughs> quite get him on. Um, David's call sign is KG4WXW. Mine is KG4WXV. Our other, my other son, Matt, is KG4WXX. We like to check into nets. It's kind of fun. People are like, wait, what? <laughs> um, and, of course, Ted. And then we have a bunch of uh, you know, disc jockeys from way back that are just phenomenal on nightly. Um, they call us a ham-centric group because we have a lot of ham radio advertisers and we kind of cater to that crowd, the hams and shortwave listeners. Um, we have, you know, uh, a lot of advertisers like, you know, um, Universal Radio, Main Trading, RNL Electronics, Martin Jew, who you just had on. We have <clears throat> some of his stuff. Uh, we just trying to... Uh, bring entertainment and fun to the shortwave ham radio listener as well as, um, you know, just try and keep it on the air and keep it going. Very nice. Um, we, we, we were trying to get the video. I could bring it up behind us if we want to show uh, like a quick walkthrough. Um, uh, well, David's I've, checking. I also have a video that you sent over. I can play that. You won't actually be able to see it while we're while we're okay. on. Okay, that's but, fine. Uh, but I could definitely play that. I have to go. Yeah, sure. I have to go back to camera two, and uh, before we go back to camera two, I have just a couple of uh, of quick little uh, super chats I want to acknowledge. Uh, James. Uh, Zygu 51 X 5105 Pro, any status? Um, James will uh, will work on a status for you uh, later, and uh, and my buddy uh, Dennis over here. Props to MFJ for constantly innovating, guys. Sorry, I'm a little bit tardy on all the uh, on all the stuff. 
let me get back to camera two here and try to uh, pull up this. Um, I'm going to try to pull up the uh, the WTWW. Okay, so we're looking, we're walking through your um, your facility now. Uh, do you want to kind of tell us what's what your facility is all about? Yeah, sure. What kind of transmitters and everything, the power and sure. all that good stuff. Yeah, the uh, so um, you know, we are at a, at a detriment without seeing the video at the moment, um, but basically you are. You're looking at our three uh, 100,000 watt transmitters there. Um, again, we do have we've got three of them in there, and uh, they these things are just huge. I mean, they're the size of city buses. I mean, these things are just they're. I love working on these transmitters. Um, so, you know, the the face of this, you can see there's several cabinets that are. Uh, that take part of of a of one of these transmitters, and there's the whole uh, caged in section in the back that's got all of the power. Uh, that's that's the stuff you don't really want to touch while the thing is on the air. Um, so our cabinets uh, cabinets are full of all kinds of intricate stuff. You can so, even walk in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, step inside one of them. These are these are like an, an old an old pickup truck where there's plenty of room in the in the cabin there, so uh, yeah, you can get inside. Like and, Including some flowers. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Just a decoration to the, to the, I guess. That is awesome. So you, yeah. so three transmitters, one hundred thousand watts a piece. Yes. Very yeah, cool. Um, the main, the, where the all the jocks are and stuff is is um, on our five zero eight five frequency on the our we call it the transmitter number two. Now, if you go up to the website, you can, if you don't have a shortwave, you can listen live just by going to listen live and then the transmitter 2 link. And um, that also plays on Alexa if you tell her to, uh, I have to be careful, play play WTWW, um, she'll play it for you. And um, But yeah, we have on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is Ted Randall. Uh, we go live at 8 p.m., and on the central time, central daylight on the evenings. And then on Thursday is world famous uh, Steve Taylor. Uh, Friday is Steve Hunter um, from CKLW Days. And um, Saturday, tonight, Jeff Lawrence will be live at 8 after we got ham programming ahead of it. And um, Bob Hiles, organ music and um, QSO radio show, which Ted interviews hams for that. And then um, Sunday night is Big Jim Edwards. And so, you know, we're live every night entertaining, you know, just. And we also have requests, which is really cool. If you go up to the request page, you can, our whole library is there. That's, our, that's for Transmitter 2. You can pick a song, and then within minutes, it'll be playing, you know, so. Um, unless there's a big backlog, like on Saturday night, Jeff gets a lot of requests because there's a lot more listeners, I guess, you know, and, and they, um, and they really like it. Even during the day, people will request songs and they'll just, you know, play. <laughs> very, and, uh, very so cool. So that's a cool feature. Yeah, very cool. So now this is, this is on shortwave. This is not obviously on ham radio. Um, right, but you do have some ham radio programming on your on your station. Yep, and and ham radio advertisers, you know. Yeah. MFJ has, you know, we talk about the rig pie. We, you know, talk about RNL RNL Electronics, Main Trading Company, Universal Radio. Uh, we have um, Ham Test Online. Ham Test Online, of course, they've been with us yeah. a long time, as well as RNL. And, um, and our, so our finder is another our gentleman. finders there. So very, we, very cool. we promote, you know, hobby related mm -hmm. companies to, and, and it helps pay the bills. It's uh, a big power bill to run all those transmitters. Yeah, I guess that might be that, that <laughs> might be. So now this yeah, goes out worldwide little. and, and your audience is targeted at a worldwide audience so uh here's here's what you got going on um 
you know, again, shortwave, uh, much like our ham radio frequencies, everybody with a general coverage receiver can pick us up. So as long as you got an HF radio uh, rig in your in your shack, you can hear us. Um, mm-hmm. So propagation, propagation is always our friend uh, because uh, it goes all over the planet. So as far as target audience goes, everybody pretty much here in the continental U.S. can hear us. Uh, we have plenty of I've just sent out a stack of QSL cards not too long ago uh, to our international friends. Uh, so it's we've touched every country that's out there uh, as far as the QSL cards. Our target area is really you know Europe and overseas. Mm-hmm. You know as far as because we want to reach the world. So uh, luckily, people in the U.S. can also hear us. But Very our, nice. our specific target zone is outside the U.S. So um, for those that, that have, you know, there's a lot of new people that watch my show. And there's a lot of new hams and aspiring hams that are probably watching today. I'm kind of wondering. So the purpose of shortwave radio or of your station, is, what's your mission uh, your the that underlying mission, why do it? Um, I guess our mission is to entertain and have fun on uh, on the shortwave bands, just like you know it used to be before um, all the propaganda, so to speak. There's a lot of um, outside of the U.S. religions and stuff like that, but, but we we just want to entertain with music and fun, and also. You know, we we have some you know gospel messages intertwined. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not we want to spread the gospel, but we also want people to accept it and and enjoy it while we play you know music too. Um, is there anything you want to add to that? David? No, man. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, it's and again, I mean, we we run this. I mean, it's a radio station. And that's literally what we are. Um, you know, so if you tune out on your car on AM or FM, you're just hearing a regular radio station. We're doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. That's that's it. We're a radio station. The only difference is that we cover the planet. So, <laughs> that's, that I mean, that is freaking we're going awesome. Everywhere. That is when, awesome. Um, when we go out to Vegas, usually for the <laughs> NAB in April, which we didn't this year, but because of everybody was shut down, but. We go out to Area 51 and broadcast from out there after after the show. And, and what's really cool is, like, out in the desert there, 5085, mm-hmm. our transmitter to nighttime frequency, comes in like a local. So it's uh, it's really, really cool. Uh, we, we do well on the West Coast area. So is this something that, that anybody with their ham radio pretty much an HF set can tune in and pretty much guaranteed to hear you on a given night. So is it better night? Pretty much. Yeah. uh, So uh, every night uh, you can pick us up at uh, 5.085. You know, so just swing that dial on over there and, and you'll pick us up. That is very, very Basically the greatest hits of all time is what we call it. You know, some of the 50s, 60s, 70s, 70s, and maybe a little bit of the 80s um, were just, you know, all good time rock and roll hits. A little bit of country, maybe a song or two. And then we have, like, an, once or twice an hour, we have an international to tune, one mm-hmm. of the top 100 hits of Europe. So, we, you know, that's our target audience. So mm-hmm. we try and add that as well and a lot of the people from the u.s that hear it just they love it too it's all upbeat stuff primarily you know stuff you can you know clean the house to or it just keeps you going and keeps you keeps your foot tapping and and you know your happy go lucky music very very nice uh i'm gonna take a i'm gonna switch shots here i'm gonna go over to my uh to my screen and I want to, I'm on your website now and I'm kind of looking, the top picture here from your site, your transmitter site tour. Um, is that, is that from the top of your antenna? Standby. Uh, 
Yeah, so the very top, oh. very top pitcher. Uh, uh -huh. No, that's that's some drone footage. Okay. Um, of the property. Yeah, of, of the property. Um, and where and are you located? Lebanon, Tennessee. Um, it's, I guess, the home of Cracker Barrel, I guess. Um, we're actually right across the Smith County line, but we're still considered <coughs> Lebanon. And, and that's east of Nashville for those that might not be familiar with the area. It's one county east of Nashville. And um, it's in a rural area, but mm -hmm. um, if you if you go up to the transmitter site, you'll see the gates and the drone footage and and uh, scroll down. And then it looks like you have a folded dipole on the building. Those are rhombic antennas, and they're basically diamond-shaped rhombics. So you have a feed point, and then you have like a they go out in a diamond. And how long um, are those antennas? Like a mile. Miles and miles of wire. <laughs> Thousands of volts. <laughs> we wow. have an ID at, at, at the top of the hour that um, our Saturday night guy, Jeff Lawrence, uh, cut for us. And a lot of people just love that. They'll even comment on the miles of wires and thousands of volts. <laughs> wow. That is insane. I'm not going to play the movie. There's the transmitter <laughs> again. Transmitter one. Transmitter two and mm -hmm. transmitter three. Uh, what's the all three transmitters are playing different, or, or you, you've got different programming they are. on the different transmitters? So, uh, that is correct. Uh, so we have on transmitter number one, it's a, a church out of LaPorte, Colorado, that's on that one. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're spreading the good word on it. Uh, transmitter number two, our heathen transmitter, where we play the rock and roll. Um, then transmitter number three is, is one of my personal favorites. Uh, it plays, it plays the gospel in about eight, eight or nine different languages. Uh, so what's happening is depending on propagation and time of day mm -hmm. is, uh, what language we're broadcasting in. And this is all, it's all dramatized and it's, it's really, really well put together. And that's, that's one of my favorite transmitters is, uh, is, uh, is our blue transmitter, yeah. So, and again, it's uh, it has different target zones, and it's but again, you can pick it up uh, all over the all over the world. But as far as where it's the strongest, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's the length that we're we're broadcasting okay. in. Okay. And uh, you know, so it's you you can watch that power meter spin when all three of those transmitters are turned on. Oh, I'll bet you can. We're coming up on. Uh three minutes right now till the end of my show and uh and then we're gonna we're gonna all migrate over to the ham radio crash course uh to finish out the day here it has been it has been a long but great day guys um so oh, a few family photos there is uh there's holly up there at the top yep. of the uh, screen and what are you yep, playing with Ms. there holly, holly? Yeah. Uh, so what is she doing? Oh, she's she's changing frequencies. Yep. Okay. Yep. So each one of those transmitters are frequency ag frequency agile as well. So she was changing frequencies on that one. Very very nice. Under that, yes. who is uh, who is Matt? Uh, Matt is my brother. That's KG four WXX. Um, I don't remember what we were doing that day, but uh, that's one of the transformers that he's behind. So okay. Uh, he's and he's then, not he's not a Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. And then yours then what's, truly what's the that right there, yeah. right there. Yeah. The, yes. Uh, really what is too. that you huge? What is that huge and looking very heavy piece of. Uh, yes. That's the final tube that we have in that transmitter. Um, it is, uh, you know, I, it may not look like I'm struggling, but uh, that is definitely a heavy tube uh, to put into that transmitter. I bet you are. I am going to come back over here to camera number one maybe let me uh let me get out of here okay um oh god come on guys don't do this to me now don't do it to me now um folks thank you so much for being on the uh on the show i uh i need to say a few thank yous i've got just a few seconds and uh we are going to start moving over 
to uh, to Ham Radio Crash Course, and I hope the mods are putting the uh, putting the address in. Um, thank you again so much, and uh, for the rest of you guys, thank you for joining us. This has been Thanks. fantastic. Um, we are so happy to be here, and you guys rock. I'm Bob, K6UDA, and uh, yeah, I'm out of here. 7-3.